الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وحده في ذاته ووحده في صفاته وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا وبعد فقد قال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة الفاتحة بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا رب العالمين Reflections on Surah Al-Fatiha Part 10 Lead us not into the wrong path Last time in Part 9 on Reflections Reflections on Surah Al-Fatiha The Path of the righteous, I mentioned that in our plea and request to Allah regarding the straight path, إهدنا الصراط المستقيم, we begged for the path of the righteous, صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم, the path of those whom Allah has blessed from among the prophets, from among the siddiqeen, the truthful ones, the honest and upright ones, the path of the of the martyrs, those who fight for the cause of Allah and give their lives for the sake of God Almighty, and also the righteous, the decent, just, and virtuous ones. وَمَا يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَهِ فَأُولَاءَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءَ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَا أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا And excellent are those as companions. And we must always desire and be on the path of the righteous. Recognizing that there is a possibility to deviate from the path that we are set on, as-sirat mustaqim, the straight path Allah had taught us to pray for, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم. So Allah taught us to pray that we are not led unto the wrong path. Sirat al-ladhina an'amta alayhim ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim wala al History is a witness to two groups of people who after guidance has come to them deviated from the path. One group became rebellious and defiantly disobedient to Allah and in turn, they earned the wrath of Allah, the anger of Allah, and the other group plainly lost their way and committed shirk with Allah. So lead us not into the wrong path. We ask Allah to lead us to the right path, the path of the righteous. So who are these two groups? غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين غير المغضوب عليهم This is the path that Truly, none of us wishes or desires. The path of those who were defiant and rebellious, those whom Allah was quite angry with. The Quran explains who they are. Surah Al-Baqarah is a very peculiar surah. It is the second surah of the Quran after Surah Al-Fatiha. It begins by identifying three types of people. The God-fearing one, al-muttaqoon. The disbelievers, those who reject God's revelation. And the hypocrites. And immediately after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns our attention to the story of Adam. The story of Adam. Adam who was to assume his role and mission on earth as God's vicegerent on earth. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that he will not leave him nor his descendants without guidance. And upon concluding the training in the garden, Adam was dispatched to assume his role on earth. And the story ends with a great lesson. And we said, descend all of you down from the garden, Adam and Eve and Iblis for that matter. Now go ahead, inhabit earth. Whenever guidance come to you from me, this is the promise Allah has given Adam and his descendants, meaning Allah was going to guide all people for all time to come, beginning with Adam, and we have the final guidance, of course, the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, descend all of you, whoever from among you receives guidance from me shall never be in a state of fear or anxiety. As for those who disbelieve and belie and reject our ayat, our messages, our signs, then they will be among the companions of the hellfire dwelling therein forever. May Allah save us from this. Now, Immediately after the story of Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in 84 ayat, from ayah number 40 to ayah number 123, Allah reveals a detailed charge sheet against Bani Israel, the children of Israel. In these ayat, Allah explains how they were chosen by him and preferred over the entire creation and how they were cast down to the lowest of the low, having God's wrath being poured upon them. Now, why is the account of Bani Israel important to Muslims? Remember, Surah Al-Baqarah begins with the story of Adam. Immediately after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enumerates the crimes of Bani Israel in 84 ayat. So we may take lessons. So we may learn from the former Muslim Ummah. Bani Israel was a Muslim Ummah. Musa alayhi salam was a Muslim. The Torah that he received where a book from Allah, guidance was coming to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we may learn lessons from history. It is extremely important because they are the ummah, the nation that preceded the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And because they rebelled against God so much so that Allah's fierce anger was upon them and God informed us about them due to the similarities between the present Ummah, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the former Ummah, Bani Israel. God sent prophets and messengers to them with a specific message, the book, the law, and a common objective, and the objective was to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth, to make the Lord supreme. Allah in this narrative explains the favors and bounties he had bestowed upon them. And in spite of all this, they turned away from the divine guidance. The account begins with ayah number 40. Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa awfu bi'ahdi, ufi bi'ahdikum wa iyaya farhabun. O children of Israel, recall the bounty that I have blessed you with. Recall this blessing upon you and fulfill the covenant I made with you and I will fulfill my pledge to you. And fear me. And then the discourse ends with Ya Bani Israel, 
على العالمين. O children of Israel, recall the bounties, the favor, the blessings that I have blessed you with, and I have preferred you over the entire world, over all the worlds. Now, ayat 40 to 44, there's an appeal to Bani Israel to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because when Muhammad went to al Madina, there were Jewish inhabitants in al Madina, So there was an appeal to them to accept God's final prophet that they were waiting for, the Messiah that they were waiting for. There was an appeal to believe in the last and final book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأوف بعهدي أوف بعهدكم وإياي الفرهمون وآمنوا بما أنزلت مصدقا لما معكم ولا تكونوا أول كافر به ولا تشتروا بآياتي ثمنا قليلا وإياي فاتقون Believe in what had been sent to Muhammad of course the Quran confirming what came before and don't be among those the first ones to disbelieve in it and do not purchase with my ayat with my revelations a petty price and fear me and do not confuse truth with falsehood do not cover truth with falsehood and conceal the truth while you know it. And they knew Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was a prophet of Allah. They knew the Quran was a revelation coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, confirming what was in the Torah. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَوْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَارْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Establish your daily prayers. Pay your zakat just like the Muslims do and bow before those who are bowing. Be humble. أتأمرون الناس بالبر وتنسون أنفسكم وأنتم تتلون الكتاب أفلا تعقلون What's wrong with you? You command the people to do good but then you forget yourselves while you are reciting your book and you know in the book Deuteronomy 18.18 mentions the coming of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم أفلا تعقلون Have you no common sense? This is it You have the final prophet You have the final revelation, the final divine guidance. Allah here is reminding Bani Israel of the great favors he bestowed upon them and that they should fulfill the covenant with Allah, that they should believe in the last book he sent to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum ala al-alameen. That comes now next. The end of the discourse end with the exact ayah verbatim you know so you have approximately 80 ayat between this ayah ya bani israel adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum ala al-alamin the same ayah ends the discourse ayah number 147 but then again allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions why, during the course of their journey with their prophets, the many prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to them were cursed by Allah, were cursed by their prophets even. Allah became so angry with them that he mentions in ayah number 61. And they were covered with humiliation and disgrace. And they remained under the wrath, the ang anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? That's because they used to willfully reject the ayat of Allah. And they used to kill their prophets without any justification, without any just cause. They're very materialistic type of people who longed for material things. 
and rejected their prophets who were guiding them to the truth, to salvation. So some they killed. Zachariah, allegedly Yahya, and allegedly Isa, and they boast about killing them as well. وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْا وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ That's because of their disobedience, defiance, and transgression against the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They went beyond the bounds. A similar ayah actually appears in Surah Ali Imran. ضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الذِّلَّةُ أَيْنَمَا ثُقِفُوا إِلَّا بِحَبْلٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَحَبْلٍ مِّنَ النَّاسِ وَبَاءُوا بِغَضَبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَسْكَنَةِ Humiliation and disgrace will strike them wherever they seek protection except when they seek protection from Allah and the people. And they have وَضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَسْكَنَةِ and they have incurred the wrath of Allah unto themselves and have been struck with misery for their rejection of the revelations of God and for unjustly murdering the prophets. It is all because of their transgression and rebellion. Same crimes that were mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah are repeated in Surah Ali Imran. Not only have they earned the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their own prophets cursed them for their defiance and disobedience. لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُودَ وَعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمْ ذَلِكَ مَا عَصَوْ وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ Those among the children of Israel who defied God and denied the truth have been cursed and rejected by the tongue of Dawood and Isa, the son of Mary, because they rebelled and persistently overstepped the limits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we find twice in Surah Al-Baqarah praising Bani Israel. I mentioned the ayat, Ya Bani Israel, atkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alayk wa anni faddaltukum ala al-alameen. I have preferred you over the whole words. Allah is praising them. But then you find also twice Allah mentioning how angry he was with them. وَضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الذِّلَّةُ وَالْمَسْكَنَةُ وَبَاءُ بِغَضَبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ So Allah mentions twice his wrath upon them. The Bible, as a matter of fact, is full of verses that mention Allah's wrath against Bani Israel. Here is one in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 8. Even at Horeb, which is Mount Sinai, supposedly where Musa السلام, received the commandments from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even at Horeb, uh, you provoked the Lord to wrath, and the Lord was so angry with you that he would have destroyed you. So it's not only in the Quran. It is mentioned even more in their own book, in the Old Testament. Basically, they had kibr, arrogance, toward God, toward revelation. And what is the meaning of kibr? We have this hadith you find in the two sahih. الكبر بطر الحق وغمط الناس كبر is refusing the truth and degrading, belittling people. Yes, Allah is very critical of Bani Israel. However, we cannot generalize and say that all the Jews and all of Bani Israel and all the followers of Musa were bad. Allah mentions in that discourse in Surah Al-Baqarah إن الذين آمنوا وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالنَّصَارَى وَالصَّابِئِينَ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Verily, those who believe, the believers, 
and those who became Jews, walladina hadu, the Jews, wal nasara, the helpers of Isa, the Christians, and as sabiin, the Sabians, whomever from among them believe in God and the hereafter and does the good righteous deeds just like we are required to do believe in Allah believe, believe in the hereafter do good deeds indeed their reward is with their Lord and no fear nor any anxiety shall come upon them they are not all alike as a matter of fact even at the time of the Prophet take for example the Sahabi Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam was a, not only a Jew, was a scholar, was a rabbi. His name was Al Hussein bin Salam. And when he heard Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never hesitated for a moment. You may say that he was a Siddiq. The Torah is calling for a Messiah. Abdullah ibn Salam met the Messiah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, heard him, heard his message, heard the recitation of the Quran. He immediately recognized him to be the Prophet that they are waiting for. He accepted Islam immediately. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had him in his home and he hid him and invited some Jews to his place. After talking to them about Islam and reciting ayat, he said, won't you accept Islam now? They said, oh no, thank you. Then the Prophet asked them, do you know al Hussein bin Salam? Oh yeah, of course. He is our leader. He is our rabbi our scholar. What if I tell you that he accepted Islam? Oh no, God forbid, he will never do that. In no way Abdullah ibn Salam would do such a thing. And then he called Abdullah ibn Salam out and he explained to them and invited them to embrace the faith. And they immediately switched 180 degrees. Oh, this guy is awful. This guy we don't trust. This guy is mischievous. This guy is this. This guy is that. Immediately. So, not all of them. Some of them indeed have accepted Islam. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, لَيْسُ سَوَاءَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ أُمَّةٌ قَائِمَةٌ they are not all alike. Among the people of the book are upright people reading Allah's ayat all night while they are prostrating. They believe in Allah and the last day they encourage and they promote all the good and forbid the evil and race haste into doing good things, they are truly among the righteous. So, and we find them today, as a matter of fact, there are so many from the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, who truly believe in Allah and who truly work so hard on social justice issues. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us learn lessons from these ayat. Just read, you know, those ayat starting with ayah number 40 on down until ayah number 40, 148 and learn not to follow their lead because we are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ Well, I need to know about them so I don't fall in their trap. So I need to know more about their attitude, their behavior, how they, you know, reacted to revelation and so on and so forth. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and lead us not into the wrong path. Inshallah, Allahumma ameen. Qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisal muslimin wa muslimat fa astaghfiruh.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Lead us not into the wrong path So who are al-maghdubi alayhim Hum man jaahum al-haq Wa'arafuh Fa'harrafuh Wa'anharafu anhu Dhulman wa'udwanan وَاسْتِكْبَارًا It is they, Al-Maghdubi alayhim, who received the truth and knew it. However, they willfully changed it, deviated from its path, unjustly and out of arrogance. So, to put it mildly, those are Al-Maghdubi alayhim. The former Ummah, Bani Israel, the victims of Allah's wrath, due to their crimes against God Almighty. And truth be told, now comes something that may not be palatable, but we have to accept it. It is we, and let me borrow here a phrase from Dr. Israr Ahmad, our founder actually, who in one of his lecture made a very profound statement. He says, we, the Muslims, are under the grip of divine punishment today. Muslims today, 1.7 billion Muslims, have earned the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's not saying that without any explanation. And then, he mentions that if we compare the crimes that were committed by the Muslims over the centuries to the crimes that were committed by Bani Israel, you'll find them very similar. And if they incurred the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are you not to incur the wrath of Allah upon yourself? Just because you are the you are the believers, the last ummah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Kuntum khayr ummatin ukhrijat linnas, because you are the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he made you the middle nation, is it because you call yourself Muslims? No, you don't find any change to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealing with people, dealing with communities, dealing with nations. There can be no change to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they rebelled against Allah and Muslim, Muslims rebelled against Allah, their fate is going to be exactly the same fate as those of Bani Israel. Why not? Allah is most just. And let me share with you this hadith. And this is where Dr. Israr Ahmad rahimahullah, got the hint that whatever is happening to us today is because we are copying, we are following the footsteps of the former rebellious ummah. Not the good ummah, not the small individuals from that ummah, but the majority who were rebellious. And here's the hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيَأْتِيَنْ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي مَا أَتَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ حَذْوَ النَّعْلِ بِالنَّعْلِ There will come a time when the conditions of my ummah will be similar to the conditions of Bani Israel like the two shoes of a pair. Like following in their footsteps, حَذْوَ النَّعْلِ بِالنَّعْلِ حَذْوَ النَّعْلِ بِالنَّعْلِ Take the two shoes and put them back to back. You'll find them to be what we learned in geometry, congruent, exactly the same. And this is precisely what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 1400 years ago prophesied. And it is true. حَتَّى إِنْ كَانَ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَتَى أُمَّهُ عَلَانِيَا لَكَانَ فِي أُمَّةِ مَنْ يَصْنَعُ ذَلِكَ Even if one of them were to commit fornication or adultery with his own mother, you will find one of my ummah doing the same. That's how similar the ummah will be. 
And then he says, وَإِنَّ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ تَفَرَّقَتْ عَلَى ثْنَتَيْنِ وَسَبْعِينَ مِلَّةِ the, the children of Israel divide it into 72 sects. وَتَفْتَرِقُوا أُمَّتِي عَلَى ثَلَاثِ وَسَبْعِينَ مِلَّةِ And my ummah will divide into 73 sects. كُلُّهُمْ فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا مِلَّةٍ وَاحِدَةٍ All of them are in the hellfire except for one party, one group. مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِي My way and my companion's way. My way. This is why the ayah, سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ We need to know who they are. And I gave the whole sermon on that. They are the prophets. They are the siddiqeen. They are the righteous one. All of those great companions that were the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the prophet himself. If we follow their guidance, we will never go astray. We will never be in a position where Allah becomes angry with us. So, the Prophet rightfully said, you will follow their footsteps, step by step. Step, you will copy them and you will be just like them. And if Allah is angry with them, why will he not be angry with you? So, there are so many lessons to learn from Bani Israel. There are so many lessons to learn from the Qur'an, from their discourse, from their stories. And there are so many lessons to learn from this ummah over the past centuries. What happened? What were the crimes of Bani Israel? Let's just compare. If the Prophet said, okay, there will come a time when this ummah will be just like the previous ummah in terms of the crimes that they have committed. Well, let's enumerate the crimes. What did they do? The first thing, they used to reject the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have we not done the same? Has not the ummah willfully rejected certain parts of the sharia? Has there not been Muslim leaders who have deviated from the ayat of Allah and followed the West and followed their own way. Have we not rejected the concept of bartering and in its place put the interest-based economy that is all over the world? Think about that for a moment. Yes. They used to kill their prophets without any justification. You say, well, we don't have any prophets. Muhammad was the last prophet. But think again, how many Muslim scholars, rulers, Muslim rulers have killed because they are on the right? How many imams were imprisoned and tortured? Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Abu Hanifa, Sayyid Qutb, who was hanged because of speaking the truth. And what does the Prophet say regarding the ulama? Al-ulama waratatul anbiya. The ulama, the scholars, are the heirs of the prophets. So if we don't have any prophets today, next to them are the scholars. We have done similar crimes. ذَلِكَ بِمَّا عَصَوْ وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ They used to disobey, defy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and transgress the limits. We've done the same thing, even at the individual level. I have seen so many people come to the masjid and pray, and subhanallah, big beard like this, and fast, and come to taraweeh, and come, and they do fraud, and they cheat people, and they disobey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, left and right, and that's pretty much... I don't want to say the majority, but I have to say the majority of Muslims in the world today because if the majority were sane, good, and upright, we will not be in this condition today. Muslims are in absolute humiliation and disgrace ever in our history, ever. What to talk about Bani Israel? Disgrace, humiliation had been heaped upon them. It's, it's heaped upon us now. 
So not until and unless we open our eyes and realize who we are. We are Muslims, number one. Where we want to go? We want to go to Jannah. How to get there? The path, the straight path. But that path has to be the path of the prophets, the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada, and the Salihin. No other path. No other path. We need to reform ourselves individually, and then we have to work hard to reform our families, our communities, and our country. Why not? We need to commit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the cause of Allah and work for the hereafter, not for this dunya. We have the example of those who run after the dunya, Bani Israel. You want to continue in their footsteps? You go ahead. You know the consequence. I'm sure you don't want that path. We want the right path. So Allah lead us not into the wrong path. Allahumma ameen. Inna Allahumma malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayuhu aladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama sallayta ala ibrahima wa ala ali ibrahima inna kahmidu majid. Allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama barakta ala ibrahima wa ala ali ibrahima inna kahmidu majid. اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك واجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين ومن عبادك المخلصين وارحمنا برحمتك الواسعة يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على خير خلقك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين آمين يا رب العالمين